Psalms 28, begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness of, the, of their endeavors. Give them after the works, work of their hands. Render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and, my, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. We're thankful, Lord, that even when we're facing things and don't know what's going on, you're working in the shadows. We're certainly glad that that young lady on the other end of that phone call got born again the other day. I hate Brother John, Miss Nina had to go through hardship, but Lord, it is worth it. God, we're thankful, Lord, that it all worked out. God, we're thankful for you hearing and answering prayer. Lord, there was testimony to that. Lord, you gave peace and you gave answers. and God, you did great things. And God, we're glad you're long-suffering, God. Even when we disappoint you, Lord, you're quick to forgive. Lord, we just bless you for being so good to us. Now, Father, help us from the Word of God tonight. We certainly do need your touch. We need your help. God, give us insight. God, to certainly grow us and, Lord, grow our faith. May we leave forth from this place ready for revival. Now, Father, I pray for those that are providentially hindered that love to be here and couldn't be here those that are sick I pray for them Lord thank you for help brother Peter and he was able to be back with us tonight Lord I pray for Miss Natalie it has to have her wisdom teeth cut out on Friday that it would go well and God you'd be with her God meet every need of every heart here tonight and God certainly send revival these days not only here but to all your churches God, we stand in a day of perverse and wickedness. We live in a generation that the Lord blasphemes God and hates the very thought of God. But Lord, I'm thankful you got a remnant. God, I pray your remnant would come alive, would shine as lights in this dark world, and we'd see many come to Christ before it's everlasting too late. Help us tonight. Bless now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Let me draw your attention to several things here. Way of introduction. The first thing I want you to notice is David's plea. Verse number one. He says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. David is peti petitioning Almighty God. He's about to set his plea before God. He cries unto God, uh, depending on God to help him uh, where he's at and what he needs. And can I say, what a blessing that he called on God. Uh, my dear friends, he didn't have the privilege we have. He did not have a complete copy of the Word of God. He did not have the Holy Spirit indwelling him, uh, but he had confidence towards God. He began to call on God. Sometimes because we have the Holy Ghost and we have the Bible, uh, 
We don't call on God. We don't depend on God. We think we're okay. My dear friends, uh, it'd do us all real good if we'd learn that God is longing to hear us pray. Second Chronicles seven fourteen, still in the Bible. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, pray, then will I hear from heaven, heal their land, forgive their sin. What we want is the healing of our land without praying. Friend, it'll never happen until we get right with God, pray and seek His face, and then we can see revival take place. We see His plea. Notice David's preoccupation, though. So I was reading this. This jumped out. He's, he's praying, but he's very preoccupied. Look what he says again in verse number 1. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. In other words, them that die. At one point he cried in one of the Psalms that what good is it for them that go to, to, to the grave? They can do no more for God. He said, if I don't hear from God, I might as well be dead. But notice it continues on in verse 2. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee. When I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. He says, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Uh, he's preoccupied with being drawn away from God and not hearing from God. Uh, He's preoccupied with the, uh, the very thought that God may never speak to him again. I wonder if that's our preoccupation. You see, we're preoccupied with how much food's on the shelves at Kroger, what the price of gasoline is. We're preoccupied with traffic. We're preoccupied with all kinds of things. But we're not preoccupied with the thought that God may never speak to us again. That would change a whole lot in our life if our preoccupation was let me hear from God or let me die. Hmm. We see his plea, we see his preoccupation, but notice his praise. Look with me in verse number 6. He said, blessed be the Lord. You know what happened? God spoke to him. His prayers are now answered. He said, blessed be the Lord. Because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I'm helped. Uh, therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, uh, and with my song will I praise him. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, 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 if you truly get a hold of the horns of the altar, uh, and you become preoccupied hearing from God, uh, when God does speak to you, uh, praise is a natural thing. Uh, uh, you'll rejoice in that God heard you. You'll rejoice in that God spoke to you. You'll rejoice in that you matter so much to God that he took time for you. Uh, he's rejoicing. He couldn't hold it back. And he praises God because God overcome what he was fearful of, never hearing from God again. All that's good, but I'm interested in something in verse number 2 tonight. As I was just reading the scriptures this week, I found myself here in Psalms 28, and I come across this verse, and I could not get away from it. He says in verse 2, Hear the voice of my supplications. When I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. With God's help, I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight on the holy oracle. The holy oracle. I see you all thinking, when was the last time you heard a message on the holy oracle? Mm-hmm. I didn't think so. I'm interested in this whole... David, in his preoccupation of being fearful that God will not speak to him, uh, he's saying, hear my supplication, hear my voice, uh, when I'm lifting my hands toward thy holy oracle. What is the holy oracle? Can I say something about the holy oracle? The holy oracle is what gave Israel clarity. Can I say, my dear friends, uh, there's no place for a Christian to be groping in darkness. We are of the light, 
and we're to walk in the light. Christians ought to have clarity. We ought to know the will of God. We ought to know the path that He would have us trod. We ought to know what pleases Him and what displeases Him. The Holy Oracle gave Israel clarity. Can I say this about the Holy Oracle? It gave Israel commands. It's what caused Israel to know when to go to battle, when not to go to battle. When to cross over uh, uh, Chili Jordan, when not to cross over Chili Jordan. Uh, when to take up stakes and move the tabernacle and go to another uh, uh, place in the wilderness and when to uh, uh, just uh, hunker down and stay where they are. Uh, it's what commanded their lives and took them where they needed to go. Can I say something else about the Holy Oracle? It brought comfort. I don't know about you, there are times we need comfort. David is in a position in this psalm, he needs comfort in. He's troubled. He needs comfort. He says, oh, when I stretch my hands toward thy holy oracle, I'm seeking what I found before. Comfort. I don't know about you. This world is out of course. One section the psalmist said, if the foundations of the earth be out of course. And that's where we are. This whole world has gone insane. It's out of course. It's not headed the direction that God intended it to head. And we are not of this world, but we are in this world. We have to tolerate this world, and we have to uh, live in this world. Uh, and God left us here that we might uh, be a light and win sinners to Christ. What can I say? Living in this world is troublesome. Sometimes we need comfort. Sometimes we need the doors to be open on Wednesday night so we can come to the house of God because we need comfort. And I say, the Holy Oracle gave Israel a charge. It fired them up. I don't know about you, but sometimes we need fired up. You know what revival meetings do? They fire us up. They set us ablaze again. Hmm? Now I'm going to get some of you to tell your age. How many of you remember, remember those kerosene lamps? More than I thought. Y'all old. My grandma and grandpa, I remember when I was little, they had them. Uh, I remember most the smell of them. Not real pleasant. Hmm? They'd have those lamps, and they'd burn those lamps. Can I say, after time, soot would line the inside part of that globe of that lamp, and if you didn't take that lamp and clean it, you didn't get much light from it. Can I say it was giving off the same amount of light it always gave off, but yet there was something impeding the light from coming forth. Can I say that the Lord's light is always shining, but there are things that impedes us from shining as lights. Uh, we get to, uh, uh, the soot of this world building up on us, uh, and we need revival meeting to uh, come and clean our lamps. Uh, and to get us fired up again uh, so we can blaze again so the glory of God can be seen uh, uh, so others can see the light shining from us. Uh, the Holy Oracle gave a charge. It fired them up. The Holy Oracle of Israel also gave them a commission. It gave them a task. It gave them a sense of importance and a sense of urgency. When they heard from the oracle, the directions were clear. The mission was set forth, and they knew exactly what to do. And can I say, the holy oracle gave Israel also clout. No one else had it. Israel was the only nation that had the holy oracle of God. Hmm? Gave them some clout. Now, if you read the Old Testament, you'll find out <laughs> Israel was a wicked nation at times. Hmm? 
Israel disgraced God much of the time. But they were still God's chosen people. And hey, hallelujah for being part of that blood-washed crowd. Are you listening? Hallelujah for being saved by the good grace of God. Uh, hallelujah for having our names written down in the Lamb's book of life tonight. Uh, hallelujah for being allowed Brother Bob to be seated in heavenly places uh, and to know beyond a shadow of doubt in the ages to come uh, we'll still be praising him and we'll still be a testimony of his great grace. Uh, uh, but listen... Uh, Make no mistake tonight. Uh, you can beat your chest all you want to, uh, but we're not God's chosen people. Uh, Israel still is. Uh, uh, we've just been grafted in. Uh, we've got to receive the promises of Abraham because of what Jesus uh, done for you and I. Uh, we're still old Gentile dogs. Uh, not worth the powder and take the bow away. Uh, one of these days, uh, hallelujah, we'll be married to him. Uh, one of these days, he'll show us off, uh, but Israel's still God's chosen people. Mm. They still got some clout. Mm. The Holy Oracle gave them clout. And I say this, the Holy Oracle gave them confidence. The rest of the world trembled when the God of Israel got to stirring in the camp of Israel. When Israel had the shout of a king in them, other nations trembled and ran. Hmm? My dear friends, unfortunately, they didn't take advantage of what they had, or they'd had more confidence in Almighty God. You say, Brother Doug, that's all good and well, but what is the Holy Oracle? Well, the Holy Oracle that David is referring to, that he's stretching his hands toward, that he wants to hear from heaven because uh, he's worried, he's preoccupied, that uh, God's going to go silent, that he'll not hear the voice of God anymore. Uh, and he's saying that I might as well be like them that go to the pit. Uh, I'll be dead. Uh, I'll have no use uh, if God doesn't hear, if God doesn't speak. Uh, how can I be the king of Israel? How can I be God's anointed without the voice of God in my life? What is the Holy Oracle? Well, if you study the Old Testament, we have a tabernacle, later a temple that they worshipped in. And the tabernacle was laid out in three sections. You had the outer court, and the outer court's where they'd bring the sacrifice. Uh, uh, where they'd bring their bullocks uh, and they'd bring their goats and once a year they'd bring uh, uh, the sacrificial lamb. Uh, in the outer court they had the brazen altar uh, where they'd slay the animal. Uh, then they'd fillet the animal uh, and they'd burn it on the brazen altar. Uh, uh, and the outer courts where they had the, uh, 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 the, uh, the vessel that would catch uh, the blood. Uh, and in the outer court they had the laver where the high priest would wash himself. Uh, that's in the outer court. Uh, then he would go through the doors uh, into the holy place, uh, into the sanctuary. Uh, and the sanctuary, uh, it had uh, uh, the table of showbread, uh, the altar of incense. Uh, in the holy place, uh, uh, the lamps were to never go out. They were always to have oil in their lamps. Uh, uh, listen, do you have oil in your lamp tonight? Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, it was there uh, uh, in the holy place they would serve. Uh, but then there was the third section uh, within the veil, uh, the holiest of all, uh, the Holy of Holies. Uh, and inside the Holy of Holies uh, was the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, and inside the Ark of the Covenant uh, was the tablets of stone where God uh, wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger. Uh, in the, uh, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant uh, was the rod uh, that uh, budded, showing Aaron was uh, uh, the priest line. Uh, and also there was a pot of manna uh, in the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, on top of the Ark of the Covenant, uh, between the two cherubs, uh, was the mercy seat. Uh, and that's where the blood uh, was poured. Uh, and that's where the Shekinah glory of God would meet with Israel uh, and accept the sacrifice uh, and stay the sins of the people. Uh, now only the high priest could go into that holy place. And he could only go there with blood. And he could only go there adorned properly. He couldn't go in there in those sacrificial robes where he slayed the animal. 
He had to put on his high priestly robes. He had to put on the breastplate of righteousness. He had to put on the mitre. He had to put all those things on to go into the most holy place. And can I say in there was something called the Urim and the Thummim. The Urim and the Thummim went around his neck and attached to the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness had 12 precious stones, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And at Urim and at Thummim uh, is where uh, when he offered up the sacrifice uh, and he began to call upon Almighty God uh, uh, to find direction from God, uh, uh, to plead toward God, uh, God uh, uh, would speak uh, and it would come and resonate. Uh, and there were two crystals in Urim and at Thummim uh, and that uh, was a transmitter. Uh, that's where he would hear the voice of God. Uh, that's where he'd get direction from God. Uh, uh, my dear friends, that was the holy oracle uh, uh, that David is referring to. Uh, he said, I'll stretch my hands uh, toward that holy oracle uh, that I might hear from God, uh, that I might know the will of God, uh, that I might have clarity, uh, that I might have the commandment of God, uh, that I might be comforted by God, uh, that I might get a charge from God, get fired up again. Uh, that I might get a commission and a task from God, uh, that I might once again be known as God's anointed, uh, and have some clout, have some confidence towards God. Uh, hey, I need uh, the Holy Oracle of God. Say, preacher, what does that mean to us? You see, everything under the tabernacle and, tab and temple pictured something. It always pictures something. What did it picture? Well, God speaking through the Urim and the Thummim to the high priest pictures something. You've got to understand. Read Revelation 1.6. We've now been made kings and priests in Christ. I don't have to wait to become king or priest. I am right now. I don't need an earthly man to go and pray on my behalf. I've got the God-man seated at the right hand of the Father ever living to make intercession for me. Uh, and because I've been made a priest, uh, I can go to my great high priest uh, and talk to him directly. Uh, and because I've been made a king, uh, I can really reign over my own flesh. Uh, and so what a blessing. Uh, I can go into the most holy place uh, where God dwells uh, on my own behalf. Uh, so what is the holy oracle, preacher? Well, it's a picture. Just like God spoke to that Urim and that Thummim, Christ speaks to us. What is our holy oracle? It's right here, friends. Uh, this is how he speaks to us. Uh, can I help you? Uh, in here, uh, you'll find clarity. Uh, in here, uh, you'll find comfort. Uh, in here, you'll find a charge. Uh, in here, uh, you'll find a commission. Uh, in here, we have clout. Uh, you realize uh, most of the world don't have a copy of it. Uh, we got a copy of it, uh, and we're acquainted with the author. Uh, hey, we got clout. Uh, in here, in here, in here, we have our confidence. Uh, now go back and read verse 2 again. Look what it says. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. You want God to hear your prayers? You've got to pray according as that holy oracle dictates. You can't pray for fleshly stuff and God answer. When you pray, you've got to stretch your hands towards what God has set forth as the parameters for Him to hear and for Him to answer. Stretch forth your hands toward this book for your life to see what God has to say to you and to I. Now, my dear friends, Lord willing, come Sunday, we're starting revival meeting. Whether or not you have revival, whether or not you get comfort, whether or not you get confidence, uh, 
whether or not you get clarity, uh, whether or not you get fired up in a charge, uh, whether or not you get a commission, a task, uh, will be uh, determined on if you stretch forth your hands to the Holy Oracle. Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, we've not got entertainers coming. Uh, we got men who are preachers of the gospel. Uh, they're going to say, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, and if you and I uh, are stretching forth to what thus saith the Lord, uh, we'll get help. Uh, we'll get transformed. Uh, we'll get rejoicing in our soul like David did. Uh, there'll be praise come from our life. Uh, other world will see where God's appointed. Uh, why? Uh, because we put our confidence in what God has said. Too many times we take for granted the answers to the meaning of life. Everything you need for your life is found in the pages of this book. It is the absolute and final authority for our lives. But unfortunately, Brother Tommy, we're stretching our hands with the remote to see what some newscaster says. Unfortunately, Brother Ray, we're reaching for a radio dial to see what somebody else says. Unfortunately, we're reaching for the telephone to listen to some gossip to see what somebody else says. No wonder we need revival. No wonder the church is anemic. No wonder folks aren't being born again. No wonder pews are empty. No wonder churches are closing. No wonder the faith is dwindling. We've reached toward everything except the main thing. We haven't reached forth to the holy ark of God and asked God to speak. We need to become preoccupied when we come to the house of God. God, if you don't speak, God, if you don't send the answer, if you don't hear my prayer, I'll just dry up and die like those that go to the grave. Too many times. We come to church because we have friends here. We come to church seeking comfort rather than seeking the command. Too many times, like that song Miss Crystal sings, we're seeking His hand instead of seeking Him, His face. God help us Come like David in Psalms 28. Basically say, Lord, if you don't speak, I'm going to die. And we reach our hands toward him and say, God, speak through your word. I need something today from that book. He knows what you stand in need of. And many times he's a speaking, but we're not listening. We're preoccupied with something other than life or death. I've had several ask, Preacher, what's going on with the building program? Let me answer that. Nothing. Hadn't had peace to pursue it. Number one, Brother Ray's had a rough year. Number two, Probably most of the materials we need to build it's sitting out in the Pacific Ocean on an ocean liner. The price of materials have went through the roof. But truth of the matter, we don't need it if we don't need God. We've gotten so preoccupied with everything but God. Why do we need a building? God help us. Get so desperate for God that we're willing to become preoccupied with God and come to the house of God in these next few days reaching towards the word of God and asking God just like a funnel to funnel it to my heart to change my life. The preacher I'm saved, wonderful. Now let God change you his glory Jacob was one of his but it wasn't until he wrestled with God he became Israel some of you need to 
an experience like that in your life. You've just been riding the waves, bread and water, for too long. You need to come asking for God to speak to you in such a manner it changes you like it did David down there in verse 6 and 7. When's the last time you came and you hung on every word that was spoken from the scriptures? God help us to desire the holy oracle of God. Desire Jesus himself because friend he is the living word desire him so much that nothing else matters have you seen them dogs that's a detriment and they chase after everything they put them funnels on them so they can't see anything else that's what we need to kill them we need God to put some funnels on us so all we can see is him you ever notice that horses at race they put them blinders on them so they can't see the competition next to them all they can see is the finish line we need God to put some blinders on us where all we can see is him on the other side of the finish line you ever see a mule work in a field that'll pull off to one side or the other put blinders on him so he just keeps cutting that road straight some of us need some blinders on because we've been turning to the left and the right so we can just cut that road straight are you listening you know what to do that? A love for what thus saith the Lord. And you know how you get that? You get desperate. You get so desperate that nothing else matters. I'm praying God gives us a revival of desperation. Because there are souls dying and going to hell because we're not desperate enough for God. God help us to long for him and his word above all of us all stand but Clint you come get a song oh, he's coming let's pray father make us desperate God I preached a message about 10 years ago on you won't miss the water till the well runs dry God some wells are dried up but they're still not desperate. God, give us a desperation for you and the word of God. God, that might be why we've got the president we've got. Might be why we've got gasoline prices the way they are and keep rising. Might be why we've got all the problems at the grocery store because we need to get desperate because we, for too long, have taken advantage of your choice blessings. God, speak to hearts. Give folks a hungering for you and your word like never before. God, change us, transform us in your likeness. And God, use this upcoming meeting to do more than help us, but God, to change us for your glory. And God, we'll thank you for what you do. Bless this invitation now. Speak to hearts. Lord, I pray as Brother Ray's already prayed for somebody here tonight unsaved. I pray for Holy Ghost conviction. God, you'd save them before it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.